Hi everybody, this is Katie. Welcome to Network Plus and we are going to cover Chapter 1 in this short video. Now I'm going to go through these um, things, the main points in this chapter, and t uh, pretty quick because I know that uh, attention spans are kind of not very high when you're just listening and reading the chapter, but I want to read through it together with you so that it will help you um, open the chapter. A lot of us won't do that otherwise. So I'll try to keep it under 20 minutes. Um, this is Chapter 1, in Introduction to Networks, and we'll have some assignments at the end of this um, or with this chapter that are out of Chapter 1. The objectives, identifying application and protocol, looking at client servers, um, various network hardware, a little introduction to the OSI, best practices for safety, and troubleshooting models. Now, before we go um, into the book, into the PowerPoint uh, presentation and cover the main things, I want to talk for a second about um, CompTIA and the changes to this textbook. Whoop. Uh, bam, bam, bam. Let's go over there. Uploading video, CompTIA. Now, I met the author of the book this summer in 2015, and I loved her. She was um, dynamic. She, I loved the way she wrote um, the book, and I loved the new edition because it lays things out, one, that follow the NetPlus certification exam, but two, in a way where it's easy to read. So the author, Jill West and Jean Andrews, if you look at the front of the book, um, I met both of those this summer, and Tamara Dean is our previous author, so she also is still on the book because they keep they kept some of the legacy things. But Jill, um, the way that this book is structured is so much better than before. I think you're going to like it, and it's going to really help you to prepare for the NetPlus certification. Now, I'll make a, another video on that because if there's anything in this chapter that we need um, more focus on, I will make a different video for that so that they're short videos and not super long. But I do want you to go to CompTIA.org, go to their certification site, and I want you to register and create an account there because one of the main goals of this course is to get you certified. And without getting their information or without getting their study guides and their um, NetPlus objectives, we are not going to be able to get certified. So go through this process, um, create a username and password, and um, or you can, from here we can cross that off and click on comptia.org and then do the register option here. And then once you register, um, register user, once you fill out this information, you just create a username and password, and then you're able to log in. So let me log into mine real quick. And I'm just a normal person like you. I don't have any special privileges. <coughs> you can use your student email account. Save my password. That it doesn't know. Maybe not. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, we'll go back to that later. Um, I have to apparently fix my account. I don't want to waste my 20, precious 20 minutes doing that. So um, create an account anyway. Now, on the CompTIA website, one of the things we're going to do with the assignments is we're going to look at the NetPlus. So you can go to the NetPlus site, Network Plus, without logging in or you don't want to create an account yet, that's fine. And it does cover the exam objectives. This is also <coughs> part of Chapter 1. Um, I don't like to go through the PowerPoint slide by slide, so I'm jumping around, and then at the end we'll skim through the PowerPoint and see what we missed. Um, it goes through the ob exam objectives. Oh, I guess we got to put in this information. All right, fine even though I've done this a million times, but professor, you can put student. You could call yourself a chef if you want. They don't really care. You could be whatever. United States. Uh, exam objectives. I am 
uh, currently training and I plan to take the exam in the three to six months. I want to get a job. Bam. So, um, CompTIA is the best site to get our most up-to-date and current objectives. They're not going to change. The new test, the 006 is what it is, was released just this summer. And that is why we have a new addition to the textbook and why we're um, learning these new objectives. Come on. I have everything filled out. Last name required. See? Slow going. There we go. Uh, one of the links I have in Blackboard is a uh, link to, pass the, to where you can go to take the tests, but I'll cover that in an, another video. So we have the N10006. Those are the objectives that we're covering. The 5 is the one that's just recently expired. So we want to go to here, and um, I will download that too, so you have that and throw it in Blackboard. But you should create you should create a copy of it too, or keep a copy of it as well. Uh, one of your assignments is going to look through this, and also we have required Transcender for this class, and you can see the five topics that uh, the CompTIA test you on. One of the other people I met in the summer of 2015 was the Transcender test writer, and um, she explained to me how she writes the test to get people to pass from the CompTIA um, certification. So sh that was also really useful, and once we get into Transcender, which is required, um, I will teach you how to use that through a different video and that will be our main tool for cramming and studying and passing the certification test at the end of the semester. But it's broken down into five different categories. And um, again, that's kind of how our book is laid out and the, the structure of where we're going with the, with the textbook. Um, but here are our list of the objectives from CompTIA directly. Now, the reason I like this um, as a secondary tool to the textbook is that it is just kind of a list of things that you need to know and doesn't include all the explanation. So it's very long, but it's shorter than the textbook, and then it doesn't explain it. So you'll have to go, okay, what is evil twinning uh, on a wireless network, or what does brute, for brute force mean? And then you have to be able to define those. So these are all of the objectives. Acronym list, holy acronyms. Um, Transcender is going to help us know all of these objectives that are on this document from CompTIA. So don't worry about that now, we're just in Chapter 1. But you want to keep that and save it. Um, some of the other things from this trans, um, I'm sorry, this CompTIA site, uh, that you'll see uh, study materials, you don't need to buy anything else. I, I, I think with, well, I know with just this textbook, your commitment, and Transcender, you can pass the test. Um, finding a testing center and paying for the test. Um, you don't want to buy a voucher from here. You want to buy a voucher from Davenport and or, um, or GRCC. But it, this particular time, we don't have our testing center and our, vouch our vouchers purchased yet, but Davenport sells their vouchers to us at a discounted price. And I, I have this information in Blackboard as well. Uh, and I'll also list it as part of this video. So purchase a voucher. You can purchase any one of these from Davenport. Um, we are setting up our own system here at the college, but I don't know if it'll be ready by the time you're ready to test. And you can do the net plus for 163.24 right now. That price fluctuates sometimes, but if you bought that voucher here, it is $277. No way. 100 in 100 and 10 or $13 cheaper 
or hundred and some odd dollars cheaper if you bought it here. So much better option and, and place to go. So I'll share that link for you with you. But that's for now what you need to know about the CompTIA and the Net Plus Cert. That um, in the back of the chapter, the hands-on pro projects on, that start on page 43, um, we'll look at like 1-4 as part of our assignments that has you looking at some of those things. Uh, what are certifications, what degrees are required, it does a little job search and it's a good way to kind of get an idea of what the um, CompTIA um, Network Plus exam is. So that is a big portion of what chapter one is about. Now going back to the chapter from the beginning, if I look at um, I'm on page two, so I'm just starting at the beginning. Uh, some of these things you're going to read as you go through the quiz, so I won't go on and on and on about how networks are used because, um, or how computers are used, because this is something, even though we're in an intro to networking class, you should probably already know. We use them to share um, printers, and we use them to share internet, and use them to share files, and everything that we do is on a computer network. The internet is a huge network, or uh, um, uh, WAN, a huge uh, wide area network that we access. Um, popular client server applications that are used on networks and the internet, things that um, you've probably heard, web services, email services, FTP for transferring files, Telnet to connect to uh, remote areas, remote desktop, remote applications. These are all types of services that we connect with in a client server environment. So client server on page three shows you a little picture sure if it's in here yeah right here where here's the client you want to do something so you ask the server if you could do something it sends back to the client and says, sure here you go you can do that same thing when you print I hit the print button I ask the print server if I can print the print server says yes or no and then sends a message back to me so that's a client server environment um, that's what we're learning in this class and when we talk about local area networks, that's what we're learning. We're not talking about setting up networks at home. That kind of um, not confuses people in the beginning, but people want to know how to configure Windows or Microsoft so that they can share services at home and set up a network. And that's not what we're doing in this course. That's the Windows class. We're learning big environments, medium to large size network environments where we have a server and we have um, clients and we have this huge network set up that you know that we're we're used to in any any business some of the other services file services I'm sharing files print services uh, email or communication services uh, you can read about these um, voice and video phone networks are now set up to um, the computer network um, some terms here Topology. Topology. Oh, I wonder if I missed that. Oh, no, it's coming up. Um, topology. We have uh, two types of topology. Topology you should look at. Now, topology, uh, think of the landscape. Uh, the topology of, the, of um, northern Michigan is very woodsy and hilly, and it, the, you look at the the design of it. Um, topology of Indiana is very flat. A topology of a network could be very different. In most types of computer networks, the type of physical topology that we work with is some sort of star topology where the um, servers at the center and then your clients all connect to a server via a router. But we'll get into that in depth with this chapter. I'm sorry, with the future chapters when we talk about topology. But that's a physical topology. Um, a logical topology is how data is transferred. So that's like Ethernet. Uh, operating systems, 
um, this is like a net, not an operating system. There's a very big difference between an NOS and an OS. An NOS is like a Windows Server or Linux OS, uh, a Linux network operating system, I should say. Windows 10, which is what I'm using now, that's an operating system. It operates one computer. A network operating system is where you have users and groups and it's a client server model. So that, that is what you learn in, um, in this course and future courses when you learn about network administration. You're learning how to administer a client server environment. Peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, that's what I was talking about, what we're not going to learn in this class. We're not going to learn Windows and how to set up local shared resources. That's a peer-to-peer -peer network where you're just connecting with one other or two others, but not in a centralized server type way. Um, this is a big mess, but <laughs> you can see there's no there's no server that's connecting everything. They're all directly connected to one another. Uh, not a good way to set up multiple computers in a business. It's just not feasible. For one, we don't have all of these. We don't have Ethernet connections to connect to another computer and then to this computer and another printer and a scanner. We don't have all of those ports to connect. Um, the client server model is much more, it's just what's used in the industry. Uh, client server model, um, active directory, this is a term that's used to be a centralized directory for our users and, our users and um, uh, licenses and applications that are on a network. I'm only on slide 16, I better speed it up. Um, client server network model, okay, we talked about that, there's our server, we're all connected, you see the star topology, it's like a star, ding, 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 ding. Uh, NOSs, they um, are responsible for letting the client do things, so popular examples, Windows Server 2012, Release 2, that's what we teach in CIS 234 and 235, Ubuntu Server, Red Hat Linux, those are um, taught in our server administration classes as well. Um, back in the day we used to have Novell servers, but those are not as popular anymore. Bum, bum, bum. Um, physical hardware is touched on in this chapter and LANs and their hardware. So page 13, it shows you a couple switches. Oh, that's probably up here. Uh, and we'll cover these in depth. So type of typical network hardware, you have um, Ethernet ports, you have switches, you have routers, you have network printers that you connect to. Um, network interface cards, or NICs as they're often called. These are the ports. You probably have one on your laptop. Some laptops don't. You connect them with the USB now. But you probably have one on your desktop where you can plug in a RJ45 to connect to the network. But again, we'll cover that more in depth later. Um, for now, the term backbone is the part of the network that supports a large number of computers. So it's, um, it's usually run on fiber. It is the backbone of the network. Uh, this part here. So here's one subnet, here's another subnet, here's another subnet, and then this line here supports all of these computers, so that would be called the backbone. Now the purpose, this image right here is also an example of daisy chaining, which is not a good way to set up your, your design because if this thing goes down, you know, the, this subnet can't talk to this subnet. Um, but that is the backbone of the network. Uh, routers route traffic. Uh, for now, that's what you need to know. They route packets. Uh, switches and routers are very similar, but a router can also be a gateway between networks. So a gateway between your internal network and the internet, or um, between different two, two different types of networks within your local area net, um, network. So, so this is a better design, but this would be the backbone, this would be a backbone, and this would be a backbone, but here's subnet A, B, and C, and they all connect to one router. So um, one switch isn't dependent on, you know, this switch or that switch. Hopefully you can see my mouse moving around. 
A couple other terms, mans and wans and pans, you can read about those. I'm really trying to, how many, I'm really trying, oh, I'm out of time, but I'm going to keep going because we're going to get stuff. We're not covering 58 slides, but we're getting the gist of this, um, of this, of this chapter. And then, like I said, anything we need to cover more in depth, I will uh, make another video that's shorter. Uh, OSI model. OSI. You need to know the OSI model. We'll cover this all semester. Uh, there used to be chapters and chapters and chapters on the OSI model, and that's why I like this book better, because there's not chapters and chapters and chapters of it. But read about it. It is starts on page uh, seven layer not a seven layer taco or burrito, page 18, the seven layer OSI model uh, created by ISO. You need to know all the layers, physical data network and transport. As network people, those are the four that we're concerned about the most. Physical network or physical data link network and transport. Then session, presentation and application. Those we don't interact with as much, um, but they're also part of the OSI. And what the OSI model is, is a si uh, very basic. It's a system for packaging up our packets of data. So I'm a user. I don't know what's coming up here. Um, you know, I'm not going to go through all of these because you want to read these and we'll cover them more in depth later. But if you're a, if you're a sender on a computer, uh, uh, I'm on my computer and I want to send to my printer. I am here and I hit send. So I'm at the seven layer and my, op, my packet is go, goes down seven, six, five, four. It goes through all of these layers of the OSI and it builds my packet. So here, um, in the um, transport layer, it says um, run, send it, send it via TCP, and then it says, okay, here's my IP address, and then it can, you know, adds on the MAC address, and then converts it to binary. So it packages your data as it goes down. Then it goes through the network. So do 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 going through the network. It hits my receiver, and then it goes up and unencapsulate. So it goes down, encapsulates, goes to the receiver, and unencapsulates the data. Um, the, the OSI model is just rules. Networks and um, network devices follow these rules so that we can have one company make a NIC and another company make a NIC, but they all send data. Uh, that's a brief introduction to the OSI model and read about it. So there's, you know, all these um, slides give you a brief definition of what each layer does. We'll talk about it more and more on the, in the textbook because it is um, an important part of networking. These are questions that will come up uh, in interviews and certainly on the certification exam, um, what packets are, or PDUs, um, all of that, and how it all works together. Here's what I was talking about um, with wanting to print. So you start here, you go through the network, uh, some things are added, you go through, and then you hit the destination, and then it unpackages it. So data, adds, 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 travels, travels, da 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 da, and then takes off, takes off, takes off, and then there's my data again. Um, so that's explained in the book, and then some definitions. Uh, staying safe on the computer. Hmm. There is a fire extinguisher somewhere in here, but this is just, read about this. Um, the reason it's in the book is because it's on the certification test. So, you know, know uh, what type of wire, what plenum rate it is, for example, when we talk about wire and um, material safety data sheets. Uh, for cleaning solutions and how, you know, how is your HVAC system set up, protecting against static uh, electricity, um, running cables over fluorescent lights is a bad idea, you know, because it causes interference. So these are things that are all um, important that you need to know on a high level 
for network administration. Kind of, ba kind of common sense, but you need to, yeah, okay, keep your back straight, bend your knees, and grip your load. Okay. Don't bend with your back, people. Bend with your knees. Is that what they tell you? I have back and knee problems, so I don't know. I try not to lift heavy things, period, but it happens. Um, installation, safety, da, da, da. I've cut myself so many times on the inside of a computer. Oh, motherboard. Memory is kind of sharp, too, by the way. Okay. Get it? Get that pun? Memory is sharp? Ha, ha, ha. Troubleshooting network problems. There's a quick flowchart and a quick, um, sorry if you can hear my son screaming in the background. Hey, people, who with children, school starts tomorrow. Yay! Um, troubleshooting network problems. There is a, oh, it must not be in these PowerPoints, but on page 33, there is a quick flowchart. Um, determining your problem, a lot of it is experience, common sense, uh, but there's things that you want to check for check first, certainly, especially if you're on help desk and you're in your answering phone calls from people who literally don't know how to shut down a computer. I'm sorry, that is your future. You'll have to tell them how to find start and shut down and um, help them out that way. So that is a little um, introduction to kind of what networking is about. And then as we go in this, as we go on with this semester, um, all of these things will cover uh, much more in depth, but that's just an intro to chapter one. So I'm sorry I went over a little bit, and I hope you stay through the end. Uh, some discussion topics, things that you want to talk, you might want to think about um, before you start the exercises or the the labs that I'll post. Differences and similarities between peer-to-peer -peer networks. Um, differences between physical and logical topology. I'm afraid to Google that here while I'm recording, but Google that. Physical versus logical topology. So that's super, super important too knowing how um, networks are designed. And um, that's it for now. I'll, I'll leave, when I post this video, I'll leave a couple of resources for you to check out and um, expect to be doing a couple of the exercises uh, or the labs, the activities from the back of the chapter. So it's an intro chapter. It's kind of fluff, but it also is a good intro to what we're learning. So thanks for listening. Have a great day.